thought it was about time that I uh, put a tutorial together and just stuck with this. So yeah, in this tutorial we're just going to run through um, how to create this kind of low-key vaporwave kind of look. Uh, I just wanted to do something like this. Uh, it's pretty... I didn't spend too much time on it, but hey, you get the general idea. Um, I came across this horrendous image on one of those free image websites and it's someone that's just converted some bananas into some dolphins and I thought that was better than kittens so that's what you're getting so start with your screen whatever size you want it don't forget to rename it and uh, just going to duplicate this for the header and call that whatever you want but header is not a bad option Okay, now I'm just going to add an aligned deformer so we can change the pivot point of our objects. So we can just use that same pivot point <coughs> for the both objects. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create all our little details in here and then we're going to group it and then we're going to throw it into a duplicator. So just I've just drawn it then I've hit the C, C key for a new contour. And then I'm just going to create a bit of a space there. Hit C again. And then I'm going to draw and C again. And C again. So I'm just going to drag it over there. And now we have one shape, which is our icons. Okay, so with these icons, we can come in here and we can change the shape and scale of them if we want just depending on your your aesthetic that you wanted to go with and one thing i might do actually is just change go into our master um, and we can change the corner radius down here so we've got the option of changing them all or individual so if we just come down here and keep the top ones square and we'll just round off those bottom ones so now we're going to use a component constraint and we're going to position this based off the corners of our master object so grab your master object and put it into your target and for that out position grab that and just put it there now you've seen that the icon has snapped to the bottom left corner so we've got this index option here so if we go well that's on zero if we go one it's going to jump to the right if we go two whoops these have got rounded corners so it's probably a bit confusing uh it's a little confusing but hey you'll get it and then three um so yeah if i didn't have that rounded corner there this would have been three but it's just just got to take that into account Okay, so with these icons, I'm just going to sh shrink them down and move them across with our offset option down here. Cool. So now I move this around and it follows. So now we're just bringing our master and our header. So what we can do here is we just change the the width of our master and we want it to control the width of the header so that way that means if we come in here and adjust it that the the yellow header will keep in tow with it and our little um, minimize maximize and close icons will stay attached We've got this just here, so let's use our component constraint again, and we'll fix this to the bottom left corner. So we'll just bring our master back into here. And we'll put our out position into here. Okay. And then we're just going to offset that a little bit, lift it up a little bit. We didn't have to adjust the index this time because that's just where it's going to stay. So now if I click onto my master and I adjust the height, 
fruit will stay down there and if I adjust the width they're going to stay in the in the correct place as well okay so I've just tidied this up by putting these the components under the respective objects okay so I just wanted to show you that and basically it's because if you wanted to take a concept like this and then just expand it out having the ability to move these things around dynamically is quite handy um, in my mock-up I just kept everything static so I didn't really show the full advantage of it um, but maybe in this mock-up I'll uh, I'll change that just a little bit and we'll see how we go So now we'll, let's just create a bounding box and we'll put our master shape in there and let's just create another a rectangle. So now we'll feed the position into the rectangle shape we've just created and we'll also feed the size okay so what we can do here is we can expand uh, expand or shrink this down a little bit so this is all with um, pixels not percentages so let's just see how that kind of pans out looks pretty cool again I'm just gonna put that bounding box under the rectangle I'm gonna change the rectangle shape to Let's going to call it canvas. Let's just bring that canvas up, click on fill, click on our com wherever our image is, and throw your picture in there. Cool. So now in our canvas shape, I'm going to apply a dither filter. It's quite a cool effect. Um, it's only got a few parameters, but with these few parameters, you can kind of dial it up and dial it down quite easily. Um, in this instance, I've just kept everything as is, aside from bit depth. I've just cranked that up to about 13. Um, basically, that just, you can just see the, the amount of detail that's, that's there that's coming and going. Actually, I was keeping it on six. And that's pretty much that so let's have a look down into our master so if we adjust this now you can see that our image is just um, repeating and squashing which is not quite what we want so let's just go back to our image shader decal decal let's see how this one works so maybe the decal one is going to be a better option in this instance and with the with this canvas selected as well, we can easily just swap out this beautiful image of these banana dolphins to something else, and it's still going to have that effect on it. So, you know what you could do. So, if you've got an array of like twenty different images and twenty different titles and different colors or different whatever else, you can easily easily just link those through, and you'll still get the same positioning and you'll still get the same kind of effect you'll still get the same dither effect on your image as well banana dolphins you have to call that one banana dolphins because that's what they are so if i click that and i just throw it into a duplicator it comes up and i'm going to change this to random and then it produces 50 which is a lot straight away and i'm just going to throw that one on there and then we're just going to click on count and then we're just going to click on whatever and just add them not too many because well we don't need to so with this just um with the random as well i'm just going to change the size of it to 1920 by 1080 for obvious reasons and that's our crazy little kind of okay that is our banana dolphins. So I'm just going to create a background now and send it to the back. That was Control Y and then Control Shift curly bracket to send it to the back. And let's just choose a beautiful color that won't um, burn your eyes. 
yeah and i think this is quite could be quite cool if you <clears throat> did take the time to replace all those images with something else and have it dy dynamically resize it hit alt and click that arrow icon here to create that arrow in the middle and then we can just tweak some of these parameters to fine tune the arrow that we want for our cursor and and i'm just going to bring this down as well and i just want the i've adjusted the pivot here as well so that it's in the middle and just tweak that however you want it doesn't have to be perfect and i'm just going to go up to shape freeze transform and now everything has zeroed back our rotation zeroed back and our pivots have all zeroed back as well and then i'm just going to click on fill make that black and create a stroke around it which is white and then if we add our background color you can see what we've got there and i can apply a small pixelate filter to it and just bring that down might be best to increase the the width of your line and that's how you create a little simple cursor so let's just animate our cursor so you can just hold alt and click on that and like so basically if we want to have our cursor moving around you know you want it to to move like this just following these uh going around and doing stuff maybe clicking on these and lining them up so how do we go about doing that well to be honest i just did it that was it i just animated it that's just the cursor recording in cavalry all you have to do is set the original keyframes hit play and then drag your object around and i'm just going to use a circle as my main object to drive my motion and the reason i'm doing this is so that i don't have to create groups and do everything else but there's more than one way to tie a knot set my original keyframes on my other shape and i've got my cursor over it and i just hit spacebar and then i can just move this around And just have a bit of fun with it. And I'll put this into a duplicator. Changes to point. And shape time offset. I'm going to put in a stagger. Change this to zero. Make this negative number if you're choosing. And then I'm just going to grab these as the drivers for my shape position. This is just another way of doing it instead of grouping your object. So I've just applied all the animation to through to, to this. So now if I create another object um, and I'm going to create this as a child I'm also going to throw a spring deformer on it and the spring deformer is a pro feature and you can just see how it kind of follows along quite nicely so what we can do here is change some of these around a bit so I'm just going to change the mass to 2 and you can see that it hasn't got as much bounce in it and it's a bit of a smoother kind of a smoother kind of direction between them so maybe I could drop this down to 0.55 some of these numbers are a bit sensitive so see how you go so you can see there it's actually quite a nice ease in so you can see there it's quite a nice little ease in ease out 
And yeah, what a fast way of animating a cursor that would be if you needed to do that. Uh, to hide the ellipse or the, the base controller, you're going to have to go into the original <coughs> fill and just turn that off. And that way we now have our nice smooth animation. Hopefully that helps, and um, hopefully you learn a thing or two.